is it is it giving seminarian because that is what i'm trying to give in this video is it giving i know jesus okay is it giving spread the gospel okay i'm trying to give all of it i'm trying to give all this jesus juice flow whatever <laughs> video so in this video i want to uh, what in this video i actually want to talk about how grad school is tough mm. but before i actually get into the video if you have not already hit that subscribe button be girl one time for the one time so i'm super excited about this video so this is my very first seminary update video so the first of many and my first class i actually completed was evangelism okay and so i just kind of wanted to you know, let y'all know how evangelism went, how grad school going, how I feel about the future after this first class because whoo-wee, that thing, you know, evangelism about took me out. I was gonna be one and done. But um, so yeah, so I actually want to do this video like an interview style. I did it if, if you haven't seen any of my past videos, but um, it's kind of like I'm gonna ask myself questions and I'm going to answer myself in 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 a response i don't know so before i ask, my, ask myself questions i did want to highlight so the school that i attend is global awakening theological seminary okay and so what is so special about gats is this with the initial g-a-t-s so what's so special about gats is the school actually operates in the um, i was going to say operates in the prophetic but no they're actually really really big or in operating in the gifts of the spirit. So they believe in, in healing, they believe in prophecy, they believe in speaking in tongues, they believe in deliverance. Um, in addition to theology, of course, teaching the Old Testament, New Testament, hermeneutics. And so, uh, but they do, you know, they do classes about theology, but they also do classes on the gifts of the spirit. And so this is actually a seminary that God led me to. The Holy Spirit led me to. I had I had one seminary in mind. It was a seminary in Dallas. And God said, no, I want you to go to Global Awakening Theological Seminary so I can, you know, train up my prophetic gifting because I, I, I do flow in the prophetic. And so God does want me to get that training in the prophetic in addition to getting the training in theology. OK, and so my first class is evangelism. And so the first question is, so how is the class set up? OK. It's a good question. How was the class set up? So essentially, the class was put on by a Dr. Robert Sawville. And so Dr. Sawville is actually a pastor. He's over a pastor of this church called Passion Church. And I believe they're located in, don't, don't quote me, maybe Oklahoma. I'm not sure, but he is a pastor. And so the way Dr. Sawville had the class set up is he gave us, um, we had a lesson. So we had to watch a lesson of him doing, doing teachings. And so he recorded teachings of him at his church. And so we had to watch a lesson a week. In a week, there would be, I want to say total, there would be about six or seven chapters to read. Okay. And so those three different books, but you know, two maybe two chapters from each book. And so we had that per week. And then we also had discussion questions. And so we had five discussion questions and we had to answer the discussion questions and also do two replies. I know y'all like, what? I'm telling y'all, this is why I was like one and done. But <laughs> we had, there's five discussion, discussion questions and you had to do two responses per discussion question. So I had to do my five responses and then I had to do two responses to my classmates. So that's two, four, six, eight, ten. So 10 different discussions going on per week. Okay. <laughs> Whoo. What's my next question? <laughs> Why was grad school tough? Ooh -wee. I'm telling y'all. Number one, I will say because of all of the reading because of the lessons and because of the discussions okay in addition to having to write a paper on top of of all of the assignments and so just trying to keep up with with the assignments and not fall behind was at first i ain't gonna even lie i ain't gonna even hold you at first 
I was I was on top of it. Okay, I had I had I had Sunday after church. I'm gonna I'm do as many lessons and as many as much reading and discussion boards. And then you know Monday and then I had Tuesday and then I had Wednesday. I had I had blotted I had scheduled all of them days to do my lessons right. And I was gonna break it up two two chapters each day. And I was I was hanging in there for the first two weeks. I was like, oh this ain't nothing. This, you know I'm pumping them out, pumping them out. Came week three. I was getting a little behind because what I didn't expect was the fact that my life was going to keep going while I added school on top of everything else, you know? So I'm already super busy outside of school. And so adding school on just made it even more busy. Okay. So, Cause I got, I have, I have work. I have two ministries that I'm in. I have a small group that I'm in. I have uh, my YouTube channel that I'm still trying to keep up with. God has me doing so many different things with my YouTube channel. I have a Bible study that I do. I'm trying to hang out with family and friends. You have birthdays that are still, you know, rolling. I got to go support the birthday functions and, and friends still throwing events. Got to support the friends and their events. So, whoo, yeah. Mm, 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 mm. Your girl was your girl was trying to do it. I was trying to juggle, and I, you know, it's it's the I'm gonna say the, it's the end of the, of the of the class, and I finished with an A. Okay, your girl was juggling for four weeks, not four weeks, actually eight weeks. I was juggling for eight weeks, and I finally stopped juggling for an A. <laughs> So it actually, it actually ended up working out. One thing that the Holy Spirit, he, he, he kind of like convicted me was he told me not to, not to read, just to read, read to digest. Okay. This is not, this is not like back in school in college when I was just trying to make sure I get these assignments done and then just be done. Like this like evangelism this is information that i have to understand this is information that is a part of my purpose this is information that is a part of my ministry this is um information that is a part of my calling you know is to spread the gospel i, I spread the gospel um through my youtube videos and, and and through my ministry and this is something that i'm going to be doing full time god has already said i'm going to be doing ministry full time so God was like, hey, 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 I need you to slow down on these assignments because I really need you to grasp what you're reading, really understand, really internalize, okay, all of the information about Jesus that you're learning because this is this is how you're going to actually be, you know, this is what you're going to be using. Like, I'm going to actually put this to use. It's not like, you know, back in college, how they was, you know, we was trying to learn like geometry and chemistry and I ain't never used none of that stuff. I ain't never used none of that. I don't know nothing about, about them. Uh, we used to do in chemistry how we used to have them look, uh, the periodic table and stuff like that. I ain't thought about that since 2007. Like, but this, 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 like, is like, I'm gonna be using it like now. Like, even in, in school, I was, you know, if I was finding myself like putting that information in, in my ministry, putting that information in my videos, and God, you know, was using me to evangelize. <laughs> I got I'm, this is the Holy Spirit. Like the Holy Spirit nudging me to evangelize while I'm actually in evangelism class. So with me having to slow down, because Holy Spirit was like, hey, you just reading to read, you need to go back and reread that. I had to reread a few times because the Lord was like, you didn't understand that. And I'd be like, I didn't. <laughs> that is, bro, Holy Spirit be like, you you don't you don't understand what you're reading. I don't. <laughs> That's, and that, I guess that's, I mean, that's a good challenge. Like that's a good challenge to have is the Holy Spirit. Like back in college, in, in high school, like I didn't have the spirit of God. Okay. I was, I was not really saved. Like I went to church, but that was it. I wasn't operating in the spirit. And so to be operating in the spirit and, and God is like, Hey, Hey, I'm watching you. Like, I know you don't understand that. Why are you going to the next chapter? And I'm like, because I'm tired. Like, uh, 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 bring it back. And I'm like, okay, Holy Spirit. All right. Come on. Let me come on back to chapter two. Let me understand this. Okay. Atonement. <sighs> atonement. Lord, I don't understand what atonement means. You know, like <laughs> Holy Spirit be like, cause I know you don't listen. Come on, come talk, ask me. And I'd be like, Lord, I don't understand what atonement means. And the Lord be like, all right, all right. Atonement means this. And I'd be like, okay. 
So essentially atonement, you know, atonement is, is really pretty much means become, become, becoming one. Okay. So Jesus atoned for our sins on the cross. And so essentially what Jesus did is he stepped in, in our place on the cross and he took the punishment for us. Okay. So he who knew no sin became sin for us. Okay. And so essentially yeah so that was a challenge just having the holy spirit really hold me accountable in, in some sometimes when i was really just trying to get this lesson done okay um and so what i'm sorry i got my, I gotta, I gotta read my questions <laughs> so what were the pros oh that's so that's such a good question so timely so the pros were um the pros were actually i think I think my, this is, this is kind of like a, like an interview. You know how you could turn a, a, a con into a pro. So the, the con of having to, you know, really digest the information actually turned out to be a pro because I was actually digesting the information. I was actually getting, you know, a deeper dive into the word. I was actually getting some hands-on experience with the word, you know, and so, and actually really just understanding the gospel, understanding, you know, the great commission, understanding evangelism, what that even meant. You know, I've always heard of evangelism, evangelizing, um, but I didn't really honestly know what it meant. And so taking the class just, it's really, it's simple. It's just a method of spreading the gospel that's really what evangelism is there's different types of ways to evangelize and essentially you are just spreading the gospel when you evangelize and so in another pro was just being in the the mix and in the company of like-minded believers okay and so every i i would i would venture out to even say that every every student it was about 10 it was about two uh, 10 students in the class and I would venture out to say that all 10 of those students were very spirit led they were all spirit led they were all filled with the Holy Spirit and so to be able because you can you can, I can kind of tell you know with their responses to the discussion questions that we were all spirit filled and we were all you know operating in the spirit of God and so just being in that community and just being able to actually talk about hey you know I, I provided a prophetic word and it said this and you know God used me this way and they're like oh glory to God like I, I, I shared a word with my my friend last night that the holy spirit you know just being spirit like I, I even had look at the holy spirit there was even a guy in my orientation class that the lord had gave uh, a prophet prophetic word for me and so he sent me an email he actually which is i've been seeing this when I, I think this is so great but when he sent me an email he cc'd his wife and so anytime you know anytime he i guess anytime i've seen this i've seen this before like anytime a husband has reached out to to um a, a woman that's not that's not their wife and that their wife doesn't know like they would incorporate the wife into the conversation i thought that i think that's pretty cool so he sent me a message he sent me an email and just you know providing a prophetic word and he cc'd his wife and so i was like you know hey i said hey to his wife in the email and i was like thank you so much for providing me with this prophetic word it actually was confirmation of things that god had been you know had been downloading into me and this is very encouraging and so let me know what school you're going to and people is prophesying over you through email. <laughs> Gets, okay? I was like, oh, Lord, you know I love this. Lord, the Lord know I love this. And so, yeah, just, just being in the midst of other like-minded believers and reading the discussion questions. Whew, I mean, honestly, honestly, it felt like, like my discussion responses were like three sentences. Because I'm like, you ask the question, I'm going to give you the answer. But... <laughs> Other people was like, they was writing like books and stuff of just knowledge, just biblical theology, just filled responses. And I'm just like, did I not do enough? Let me go. Let me open the word of God and try to put some like, cause I'm like, let me try to do more. But the Holy Spirit like really reminded me like, this is, this is your first class. So of course you were just going to, you know, do kind of what you know, but I'm pretty sure as I continue to go grow in school, my discussion responses are, are going to be more, you know, more in depth and, and more, you know, meat, meat filled. <laughs> Cause I feel like I was just like, Hey, this is, this is the response. Boom. Next, you know, but some people actually took time. They, they provided scripture for the, for the responses. They provided, um, like real life examples and their, you know, responses. I ain't do none of that, you know, but some, you right, Holy Spirit. 
towards the middle end, I started to incorporate some of that. You know, I started to incorporate some other scriptures and, you know, give some examples. So I was like, okay, look at y'all. Y'all elevating me. Y'all elevating me. Another thing is that um, GATS, GATS is a school that is really big on success. They're really big on you actually, you know, understanding the biblical information, understanding your gifts. And so it's not really a school where like if you're failing, you just fail. Like they actually want you to succeed. They actually want you to pass. And so I wrote a paper, my my last paper, like I, I guess I didn't, I just really, I mean, this is my first class. So I didn't have any citations because the question was just, I could just answer it with just re responding. I didn't need no citations. And so, and I kind of like went back and forth, like, should I put citations? And I was like, but I don't need citations, but you know, it's grad school, you know? And so I think, you know, all grad school papers is, is you, it requires citations. And so, but I wasn't thinking like this. So I turned my paper in with no citations. And so he like, Dr. Silva was like, you know, this is a really, really good paper, you know, but it would have been, you know, even better with some, you know, some citations. And so I was like, ooh. And so I looked at the, the score because I was like, I know I got major points for no citations, but I got an A. <laughs> Your girl passed with no citations, you know, but that paper was bomb. I need to go like, that, that paper was bomb. Yeah, so that just kind of goes in alignment with the fact that, you know, they actually do want you to succeed. Like the paper was really, really good. You could tell I really understand. I really understood the great mission so why fail me just because i ain't put no citations like if i'm getting the knowledge get your girl an a and so that's what they did so that just kind of confirms that they're really big on like as long as you understand the information like then you good <laughs> and so this is um this is i mean this is i don't know if this is really in alignment with like a pro or a con but it i did actually learn this is, this is a lesson so i guess what lessons did you learn boom here we go so <laughs> The Holy Spirit really, um, in this class, he was like, you know, just kind of rely. He, he kind of reiterated, like, rely on him for him to be able to determine what is meat and what is bones, okay? And so meat is what is whatever the Lord wants me to actually digest, whatever the Lord is, wants me to actually learn, to latch a hold of, to chew on, you know, to, di to, to, to digest, you know, what is meat, and then what is bones is something that the Lord wants me to discard. You don't eat bones. You don't chew on bones unless you're a dog. Okay. As I was reading, going through them discussion questions and all it is, you know, there was a few times the Lord was like, that's bones, that's bones, that's bones. Or this is meat, this is meat, internalize this. Like the whole atonement thing, he was like, that's meat, bring it back. I need you to, to chew on this. That's, I need you to understand what atonement means because you need to explain it. So... <laughs> Um, and then, so like, I, I can give an example of bones. So in one of the books, it talks about like when you prophesy and it says, don't prophesy judgment, don't prophesy anything negative, always prophesy positive, you know? And so I remember reading it and I'm like, how long? Cause the Holy Spirit, <laughs> it was like, I read it. And then I looked at my YouTube channel and I read it and I looked at my YouTube channel and I was like, I got about six judgment prophecy videos. <laughs> hmm. So the Holy Spirit was like, that's bones. That's bones. Prophesy. The Lord was like, prophesy what I tell you to prophesy. If I tell you to prophesy judgment, prophesy judgment. If I tell you to prophesy positive, prophesy positive. Okay. But that like, don't box my prophecy, prophetic words in. Does that make sense? Don't box don't box, pretty much don't box the spirit in. So that was bones, okay? That's just, just an example of something that was bones. And so God um, is really like, you know, I'm really going to have to rely on him when it comes to, you know, the other classes that I take. Because some of the stuff, you know, can be opinions and not necessarily, you know, of the spirit, okay? So the meat of the video is what did I learn, okay? I learned so much okay the major thing okay lord because lord lord's like you gonna have to you gonna have to hit it from the top like meaning like do a high level <laughs> so the high level overview the main thing that i learned i will say with evangelism is the great commission is for every christian okay the great commission go baptize and teach go baptize and teach go baptize and teach it's for 
every Christian, every Christian that has been saved, whenever you come into the kingdom of God, which is the rulership of God, kingdom means rulership of God, you are to go baptize and teach. That is something that every church should be teaching. Go baptize and teach. And so I learned that not every church does push the Great Commission. And I can speak from experience because I was reading and I'm reading, I'm reading the word and I'm reading, you know, my lessons and discussion questions. And I'm just like, why am I, why is this the first time I'm really understanding that I'm commissioned to go baptize and teach? This is the very first time I'm actually coming into having a, like a lesson about this. Like this is something that churches should be pushing. This should be at the forefront of the church. Go baptize and teach. This should not be something that people are just kind of learning casually on their own because it's the great commission. That is the, the great commission is to spread the gospel. And that is what we're brought into the kingdom of God for. The rulership of God is to, once we come in, we bring others in. Okay, it's supposed to be evolving and, and it's not just about us. It just, it doesn't stop with us because we get saved, because we come into a relationship with Jesus. That's not the end of the story. The story continues. Actually, that's not even, that's not even a climax. The climax is go baptize and teach. That's the climax of the story. So right now, a lot of us are just at the beginning because I know I ain't, I ain't going nowhere. I ain't baptized nobody. I ain't taught nobody. But I mean, I kind of talk a little bit on my channel, but I ain't really just pushed the Great Commission. I'm not really spreading the gospel like we're commissioned to do. And so that was that was that was something I kind of was like, yeah, we not. I don't really in, in my churches that I've been in, I have not been taught how to evangelize. I've, I have I don't even know that there's even any classes on evangelism. OK, and so, yeah, so that was. That was, you know, kind of the big thing, the big realization is that we are all commissioned to do this. This is all this. We are all charged to do this. This is this is a, re a requirement is to go baptize and teach not to get saved and then just focus on yourself and how to better yourself and how to grow yourself without worried about anybody else. Because there are so many people because now I'm starting to preach, but there are so many people that the Lord is saying that do not know Christ because nobody has told them about it. Nobody has, has brought the gospel to them. There are so many people that um, the Holy Spirit is saying that, that the, the harvest is plenty like the scripture, but the laborers are few. The harvest is plenty. There's plenty of souls to be saved, but the laborers are not going. They're not baptizing and they're not teaching. And so evangelism for me really just, just put a spark in me to, number one, actually go out, baptize and, and, and teach. And then also to, to charge others, other Christians, to bring an awareness to the lack of, of laborers and to charge everybody to actually sit down, understand the gospel, understand salvation, atonement, uh, justification, all of that. Really understand um, the kingdom of God. And really understand how to explain it and just be open to being used by the Spirit of God. I learned that the way that I evangelize is not the way that Josh is going to evangelize. Or Sarah's going to evangelize. Or Jessica's going to evangelize. Like God can use us all in our own personality. Like you don't have to be this loud. You don't have to have like, you know, you see people on the corner with this, with this, uh, with this blow horn and they're like, you know, repent, turn away. The kingdom of God is ahead. Like we think that like you have to be like this loud, bold person to evangelize. But evangelizing can even just be talking to a friend. In, in the way that y'all talk. It don't even have to be this big old presentation. It can be just a simple conversation. God can use you in that way to, to evangelize. And so I learned the different um, types of evangelism. And so the main thing that the class taught was about power evangelism. And so essentially what power evangelism is, it, is it combines the, the, the proclamation of the gospel, okay, actually proclaim the, the proclamation, which is, which is actually just explaining the gospel, you know, Jesus died on the cross for our sins. So really just explaining the death, burial, and resurrection of Jesus and, and explaining how 
because Jesus died on a cross that he is now, you know, he is now the, he has, he now has all authority, you know, because we know that it, it was turned over to Satan from through Adam and Eve. It was turned over to Satan. And so when Jesus died on a cross, he atoned for our sins. And now we're back in, in covenant with, with God. But in order to get in covenant with God, you have to accept Jesus. Okay. So explaining, explaining the proclamation. And so, um, so evangelism is the, the, the proclamation combined with the demonstration. Okay. And so the demonstration is essentially the power of the Holy spirit. So combined with the miracles, the signs and the wonders and combined with healing, combined with, with, um, the raising of the dead, praying, praying to bring somebody to life is the power. Um, it's the demonstration and also praying, uh, operating in a prophetic, you know, giving a prophetic word or, or a word of knowledge, you know, so that can actually be the, the demonstration is actually seeing the visible power of God. So combining the gospel with actually demonstrating the, the power of God is considered power evangelism. Does that make sense? Okay. So yeah, I also, they also taught about like how to start a conversation. So if you, you know, if you feel the Holy Spirit nudging you to talk to somebody to evangelize, they gave you like just some few, few starter, starter conversations. Um, one of the big, one of the big things that they, they taught was about healing. And so if you see somebody maybe with a cast, if you see somebody limping, if you see somebody like with a band-aid, if you just see that they, you know, are injured, they're sick in some type of way, they were saying like, you can, you can, that's an opportunity for you to do, perform healing on the person. And so essentially what I've learned for healing is of course that that's, that's considered like power evangelism. So you are actually, you know, you're, you're partnering with the Holy Spirit to provide healing to the person. And so one of the scriptures that the Lord has, that I've, I've read and the Lord has really had me grasp was, so Mark 16, 17 says, and these signs will accompany, accompany those who believe in my name. They will drive out demons. They will speak in new tongues. They will pick up snakes with their hands. And when they drink deadly poison, it will not hurt them at all. They will place their hands on the sick and they will get well. And so the script, the one that I've actually been memorizing, it's a little bit different, but, um, so basically, I've actually performed healing since, since the class probably like three times. Yeah, three times, and they all heal. Yeah. So I said, I, I would be like, you know, Heavenly Father, I come to you um, standing on your word that says these signs shall accompany those that believe. And I said, I believe, God, that, that I have the healing power, God, and I ask that, um, that you will heal this person, God. You said that. If I lay hands on the sick, they will get well. And so I'm standing on your on your word that this person will get well. This person will be healed. This person will be set free. I command all power to leave in Jesus' name. I command all sickness to leave in Jesus' name. I command all cells to go back into alignment with the way that Jesus has created their body in Jesus' name. I command every disease to leave in Jesus' name. And so, I mean, you just really kind of come, like, once you stand on the word, I mean, I was about to flow. But once you, once you quote the scripture, and you know, you just start commanding all, all, all of sickness, all disease, you know, um, all, I, I say all cells, um, to be come back into alignment and, um, all pain. I command all pain to leave. You can definitely command the pain to leave. And so, yeah, that's what I learned in class. And so I did it three times. I have a friend, her back was hurting. I commanded all that pain to leave. I have a friend, she had a style on her eye that would not leave. I commanded that style to leave. Uh, my, my dad was sick with COVID. I commanded COVID to leave. I stood on the word of God that says these signs shall follow them that believe they shall lay hands on the sick and they will recover. And I said, I lay hands on you right now in the spiritual realm and you will recover. COVID will have to bow to Jesus name. And I was like, Lord, once I grab this, I'm running with it and I grabbed it and I ran with it. But, um, yeah, so that, so essentially that's, you know, you perform healing. Um, you know, you ask somebody, you know, do you mind if I pray for, you know, pray for your, for your leg or do you mind if I pray, you know, for your hand or whatever that you see is, you know, some type of, some type of ailment, some type of sickness, you use that opportunity to pray for them and you pray for healing. And then, you know, once they're healed in Jesus name, you know, that's when you, that opens the door to talk about Jesus. And so that's the demonstration combined with the proclamation of the gospel. <laughs> So yeah, okay, so that is, that's really it. Another way you can start a conversation is, um, you know, you can go up to somebody and say, do you know that you're valuable? And they'll be like, what? 
Yeah, Jesus thinks you're valuable. And then you can just open the door to edify them and, you know, start pouring into them and, you know, just tell them how, how Jesus views them and Jesus wants to have a relationship with them if they're open to accept him. And, you know, just start explaining the gospel and boom, they say. <laughs> So yeah, so I've learned so much in evangelism. And so my next class is hermeneutics. Okay, hermeneutics. I'm about to exegete the text. What's good? So um, yeah, and so I'm super excited about hermeneutics. The, the, the interesting thing about it is hermeneutics is a very, very popular class at GATS. And so when I signed up for it, I was on the waiting list. I was like number 10. And so I remember being like, oh, I'm not going to get in this class. I was like, I'm not going to get in this class. I'm, I'm number 10 on the waiting list. And so I remember telling the Holy Spirit, I said, you know what, Lord, if it's meant, if it's meant for me to be in this class, if you want me to take it, you know, in March, then you want to open the door because I'm number 10. I don't see this happening, but I feel like you want me to really detect the class. And so I remember saying it and I went on with my life. And then like a week later, I got an email saying, I'm in the class. And I was like, wait, 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 what? <laughs> wait, Lord, what you doing? So I'm like, did they ask? I'm thinking that they added, you know, maybe some more openings in the class. But I went and looked at the roster and it was, it was still 10 people. And I was one of the 10. And I was like, how did this, how did this happen? But I don't know. I, I just, I mean, I know how it happened because I told the Lord, I said, if you want me to be in this class, you're going to have to get me in this class. And the Lord was like, bet, and I'm in the class. <laughs> So yeah, so yeah, so that's next. And so thank y'all so much for watching my video. I really hope that y'all, you know, were blessed by my evangelism story and my class. And next up, hermeneutics. All right, bye. Oh, wait, wait, wait. Hold on. Thank you so much for watching. Don't forget to like, subscribe, and comment. Bye.